When was the last time God did something special in your life and you had an opportunity to share your faith with someone? When did that happen? God did something special and you were able to share your faith with someone. Well, Peter and John were minding their own business, going to the afternoon prayer service at the temple, and as it happened in so many other days, they walked by a crippled guy. And he was, of course, asked them for money. Little did they know that their response to him would have them ending up their night in jail and hauled before the principal religious authorities the next day. They certainly weren't expecting that when they went to pray at the temple. They're walking by this guy, and this had happened with so many other people, I'm sure. I mean, any major city you walk by, by beggars, right, of some sort. But I believe, and the text doesn't say this, but I believe the Holy Spirit prompted Peter and John. Do you ever get these promptings from the Holy Spirit? Sometimes the prompting of the Spirit is a very gentle nudge, just a, like a, a slight intuition, and other times it's like a push off a cliff, right? You don't know how, but I suspect that Peter and John, uh, the, way the reason they responded to this crippled man the way they did is because this, I think the Spirit nudged them, and then they responded, and they flowed, and they just went with the flow of the Holy Spirit. So they look at him and says, I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And the, and man, the man felt, felt strength, strength coming, coming to his legs, his legs and solidified. He was able to get up. When he felt a little solid, solid, he started walking around and taking some steps. steps. Oh, wow, oh, I can I walk. walk. Well, the, well, the, the, the walking, walking turned, turned to running, running and, then and then leaping and praising, and praising God, God for what had happened to him. I mean, this guy had been that way, living as a beggar for so long. Don't you remember the Bible school or Sunday school song like that? Peter and John went to pray. They met they a lame, lame man on the way. way. He, stuck he stuck out his palm and, and asked for an alms. And this is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He went walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now we're, now we're going to have, have all you leave, leave okay? okay. <laughs> then we'll call we'll the ambulance. <laughs> That's, That's a fun, a fun song, song that captured this, this, this passage really, really well. well. And, and then, then it caused, caused such a commotion. commotion. You can just you can imagine because so many, most, most of the people, people there who were regular at all in the temple recognized the crippled guy. And here he is running around, leaping, and telling people that he'd been healed. So like, who did this? He points over at Peter and John. And so and it so gave Peter, Peter an opportunity, opportunity to bear witness, bear witness and tell who was behind what had happened. happened. He, said, he said, by, by faith, faith in Jesus' name, name, his, his name, name itself has made this man strong, strong whom, whom you see and know. And, and the faith, faith that is through Jesus has given, given him this perfect, perfect health in the presence, presence of you of all. And, wow, he's talking about the resurrected Jesus is the one the healed, healed this guy. This guy. Well, well, with such, with a, such commotion, a commotion, you can imagine the security, the security people at the temple. temple. It mentions the, the captain, captain of the temple guard. guard. And then and the then Sadducees, who were really, really some, some of the power, power brokers behind, behind the temple and involved with a lot of that. The temple was the center of their whole religious movement. And they didn't believe in the resurrection. And here, and here Peter, Peter is, is saying, wait, wait, a resurrected guy is the one who's responsible for this. So they have they Peter and John arrested, arrested, and it's late in the afternoon, afternoon uh, uh, and so they, they, they had them thrown in jail overnight, and the next, the next day they, they called together the chief priest Annas and Caiaphas and the high, and the high priestly, priestly family, and of course, and of course they, they wanted, wanted to know, know they, inquired, they inquired, by, by what, what power or what, what name did you do this? this? Now, I know now, that I know just that sort of slips right, right by us, by what power or what name, but it's really quite important. Because they're wanting, wanting to, know to know the power, power my goodness, goodness, where did the, the healing, healing force, force come, come from, from for that man's, man's legs, legs, right? Where in where the world, world does this force come from? from? What is what its origin? origin? And by, by what authority? authority? Because, because they, they were the, the ones, ones who, quote, had the, had the market, market on God's, God's authority, authority right? right? They might have not had, had much power, power, but they had the authority. They had all the 
They had all yeah, the, 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 the degrees, degrees, like your like pastor, pastor does, does, right? right. And, and all, all the degrees, degrees after, after their name. name. And yet, and yet by, what by what authority are you doing, doing this? this? And, and Peter says, Peter let it be known to all, all of you. you. And to and all, all the people, people of Israel, Israel, not just the guys, the guys here, here, that this, this man, man is standing, standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth whom you crucified, crucified but, but God, God raised from the dead. From the dead. Wow, what a, what slap. a slap. The high priest of those guys, right? right? You, you crucified, crucified but, but God, God <laughs> raised him from the dead, vindicated him over your false, empty judgment. This was this a very, very risky thing for him to say because they had, had serious, serious power, power over him. him. But it but also it was also their worst nightmare, nightmare because, because they, they had not crucified, crucified Jesus not all that many, many months, months before. before. They were They're used to Jesus, to Jesus taking care of a lame man or a blind person or, being gosh, raising Lazarus. And they, and they thought they had they dealt with him and their problems were over. But now one of his couple of his followers are doing the same thing. Oh, my goodness. Here it Here comes, comes all, all the things, the fears that drove, that drove them to crucify Jesus, Jesus come, come back, back to haunt them, them once, once more. more. That's, That's why they pounced on these guys, but they really didn't have a legal basis to detain, detain them, them any longer. longer. So, so what, what they, they did, did is uh, uh, they put they a gag order on them. They put a gag order. You cannot preach in Jesus' name anymore. We can't mention this guy. You can't mention this guy. But then, then listen, listen to how, to how Peter, Peter and John, John responded to him. He said, whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. That statement is dripping with irony because they are the ones supposed to be representing God. And he said, and, and he's saying, you're opposing God. Whether it's right to listen to God or to you, you must judge. For we cannot but, but keep, keep from speaking, from speaking what, we what we have seen and what, what we have heard. heard. That, that is, we can't, can't not talk, talk about our experience. Our experience. We, we lived with Jesus for three years. years. We, saw we saw him crucified, him crucified and we have seen, seen him the resurrected Jesus Christ. Christ. I can't, I can't stop, stop talking, talking about this guy. guy. It was a very <laughs> gutsy statement. So they give him the gag order and Peter and John go to and gather a church meeting together and share what had happened. And you would think that the, the specter, specter of fear, of fear that, they that they suffered after, after Jesus was crucified where they were huddled behind, behind locked, locked doors, doors before, before Jesus, Jesus appeared to them, right? And they were afraid. Oh, my. They went, they went after, after the head of the, head of the movement. Now they're going to come against the followers. The followers. They, 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 they would be prayed again. again. I mean, they'd I mean, just spent a night in jail, right? But instead of responding with fear, they prayed for boldness. That was gutsy, wasn't it? Courageous. They prayed for boldness. And here's, and here's their prayer. prayer. Lord, look, look at their, at their threats, threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Is this how you respond to opposition, to ridicule? You probably don't suffer persecution. Do you pray for boldness or do you run and hide? <laughs> You know, no. our first, our first instinct, instinct would be to run and hide, but he's praying, he's praying for boldness in the face, in the face of this, this incredible, incredible challenge. challenge. And then, and then they, they prayed, prayed together, and it says, when they, when they had prayed, prayed the, place the place in which they, they were gathered, gathered together, together was, was shaken, shaken, and they were, they were all, all filled, filled with the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit and, spoke and spoke the word of God, God with, with boldness. boldness. The Holy Spirit had given Peter and John the words to say before the council in the first place, but now the Spirit into that whole gathering and, and to speak, to speak in the word of God with boldness didn't mean they stood up in the, in the, in the room that were gathered and started talking to one another. another. That means they had to go out <laughs> and speak and openly and bravely and boldly about, about Jesus Christ. Christ. Are, you Are you afraid, afraid to share, share your, your faith, faith and talk, talk about, about Jesus? Jesus? Are, Are you, you afraid, afraid to share, share your faith, faith? And talk, talk about, about Jesus. Jesus. Does, it Does it make you uncomfortable? It uncomfortable? You, know, you know, I know I exactly how you feel. feel. I don't I always feel comfortable, comfortable talking, talking about, about Jesus, Jesus. With, with not just, not just strangers, strangers, just people, people from my everyday, everyday life. life. 
I don't mean I don't going, mean, I have done all of those crazy things. things. I've buttonholed people in malls, <laughs> handed them the poor spiritual law track. I, I, in my earlier days, uh, I, I, had I had some experience. experience. I, was I was one of those obnoxious, obnoxious kind of people. people. If you want to corner Diane and ask her about some of my college day exploits, I'll let her tell most of those stories. I'll limit myself to one anecdote, okay? When we, we, Diane and I and Dave Kelly, the three of us flew to Spain for an academic year, and we used a charter company that specializes in students and teachers. And we flew from New York to Paris, and then we had to take the train to Madrid and then on to Granada, where we spent the year studying. But I was prepared for that flight. Uh, Dine and Dave sat together somewhere else, and I was by myself, and I had a young college girl next to me who was on her way to study for the year in Nice, France. And I was ready, because I had my little testament ready to give away. And, and uh, uh, I, ended I ended up giving, giving that New Testament, Testament away. away. I, didn't I didn't ask her to pray to get her life to Jesus or anything. anything. But, but I know I what it's like to do that. that. I, I, don't I don't do that, that kind of a thing anymore. But, but I know, know what it's what also like, like to be uncomfortable sharing, sharing your faith. faith. And I was, I was asking, asking myself, myself what, what are some of the reasons we are so hesitant or scared or uncomfortable sharing our faith? with other, other people, people in our day-to-day -day day walk of life. life. I, don't I don't mean some, some campaign where you go, like, like I say, going to a mall or to some place and targeting people, people, but I mean just in your everyday, everyday life, life with neighbors and coworkers, and coworkers and extended family and, and just people, just people you, meet. you meet. One, One of the reasons, reasons I think is peer pressure. pressure. It's peer pressure, it's peer pressure. you know? It's, it's just not done, as they say in the UK. You're not supposed to talk about politics and religion and money, money and sex. Yeah. Well, we well, certainly we can't, can't talk, talk politics, politics these, these days, days right? right? Nobody, Nobody wants to talk, talk about religion. religion. Uh, uh, we're, we're, sex, sex is, is too uncomfortable, uncomfortable to talk about, so, so we're just left with money, money I, guess, I guess, to talk, talk about, about anymore. anymore. But, but you're not, you're not, it's, it's one of those things, things that subjects are sort of taboo subjects. But what makes it even more taboo is that, I mean, look at the country. We live in a country where there are churches on every block practically. And, and we, we have, have Christian, Christian radio, radio, and we have radio, radio Christian TV, TV and, and there's all kinds of things going around. around. So, so somebody, somebody talking, talking to me about, about that, that, it just, just doesn't, doesn't quite work, work very well, well, does it? it? So, so it's peer, peer pressure, pressure is one of the reasons we're uncomfortable. I think another, another one is, is, and I have this have wonderful, wonderful image up here. here. How many of you like to sell? Some of you, I go, you, you make your living from selling. And it's, and it's a, a very, very honorable and wonderful, wonderful profession, profession, but from the, the average, average person, person doesn't, doesn't like to sell. I, I, don't, I don't like, like, I don't I don't like, like to sell, sell. and I'm, I'm going to characterize it in a negative way, way Rick, Rick, and it and doesn't, doesn't reflect badly on you, on you but, but the, the, these are stereotypes that you totally recognize. Because we sort of see selling as trying to persuade something to buy that either they don't want or don't need, but we want to persuade them that they want it and they need it. Sometimes, sometimes, you know. You know? And so, and so uh, you, 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 when, when I went out to the malls with the four spiritual laws, I was part of a program, program but, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're going out, oh gosh, I've got to convince them they need salvation, and this is the way to do it. And you feel like you're pressuring someone, like this person in the image chasing them. Hey, listen, look at what I've got for you, you know? So, if we if feel, we like, feel we're like we're having to sort of being sort of forceful on somebody or we're trying to sell them something, something that, that makes, makes most of us a bit uncomfortable. But I think, I think another, another part of it, and this gets bothers, bothers me now more, more than, than anything, anything, is, is if, you if you have the, the idea, idea that sharing your faith and talking about Jesus Christ is primarily an ideological thing rather than a relational thing. That is. It's, it's about, about the, the ideas, ideas the person, person has more than, more than the, the connection they have, have with the living God. God. I, you know, you know, I want you to accept that Jesus is the, the, son, of, the son of God in the, the Trinity, Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. I, want I want you to believe that Jesus died, died for your sins, sins that God, God raised him from the dead. dead. And if and you if accept him in your heart as your Savior, you'll go and live in heaven forever when you die. You know, you know, we want we them want to agree, agree with those ideas, ideas and if they say, yeah, 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 yeah I'll acknowledge that Jesus, Jesus is the Savior, and I will, and I will pray, pray that little prayer with you, with you. and it's sort of like a transaction, it's a sales, it's a sales job of sorts, but it's, it's, it's focused, focused on, on ideas. ideas. But that's, but that's not, not what sharing, sharing our faith 
and bringing a person to a relationship with Jesus Christ is all about, because that's what it is, is bringing a person to a relationship with the living God and Jesus Christ, not just giving them to accept certain things as true. Have you ever thought about what you're asking of a non-believer when you ask them to become a follower of Jesus Christ? You're not asking them to accept a creed, the Apostles' Creed is true, you're not, You're not asking, asking them to accept that the Bible is inspired by God. God. You're, You're asking, asking them from, from the very, very core of, of their being and sense of identity to give themselves, to put, move that from the center of their, of their whole existence, existence to putting put God, God at the center of their lives and change the fundamental orientation of their life. You're asking them to enter into a relationship with the living God and Jesus Christ and to surrender their lives to him. It's not, not just, just about, about accepting some ideas, ideas for heaven's, for heaven's sake. sake. Ideas, ideas are part, part of the way of getting, getting there, there yes. yes. But what, what we're, we're talking about is a relationship. But if you but have an ideological approach, approach, then you think, well, well what, what I need is, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid I won't know enough. But if they come up with objections, what will I say? Well, there are training programs that can teach you to have answers for the objections that they have, and that's not a bad thing at all. But I just, I just want to want highlight that we're focusing, focusing when, you're when you're sharing your faith, faith you're, you're sharing, sharing from, from the relationship that you have and inviting them and in offering a, a, the possibility of a relationship, relationship that they may have. have. You're, not you're not selling, selling ideas. ideas. You're presenting, presenting a life reality, reality, a connection, a relationship. A relationship. The passage, the passage that we that read, read today that goes, goes back, back to the whole story, story starting in Acts 3, 3 I, think I think is an excellent example of sharing faith as a part, as a part of everyday, everyday life. life. Not, Not as a special, special campaign, campaign or a revival or, or, or you know, going, going to some sporting, sporting event and, and holding, holding up John 316 or something like that. that. <laughs> I mean, I just from just everyday, everyday life. Because the first thing we see from Peter and John is, they, of course, were living their relationship with Christ, and they're going to the temple to pray, just a daily kind of activity for them, and they happen upon the crippled guy. And then the Spirit nudged them. We don't know how strong or how soft, but the nudged them, and they responded and followed through, and, ended, and the guy ended up being healed in the name of Jesus Christ. This event just flowed out of their daily living. It was not forced. It was not, not artificial. artificial. It, wasn't it wasn't even, even on, on purpose. purpose. <laughs> it's sort of it's like, like you're, you're walking, walking the golf, the golf links, links, having a having good, a good golf, golf game, game, and someone, and someone says, says something, something, or someone, someone shares something, something going, on going on in their, their life, life, and it, it gives you an opportunity, an opportunity to, sh to, to share, share with them and respond from the perspective of your faith. You see, the reason we can talk about this from our faith is because I'm assuming... You are, you are in a in living, a living alive, alive relationship, relationship with Jesus Christ. Christ. And that and you're, that you're living, living your faith day in and day out. out. And, you, and know you know that the Spirit of God is within you as you go through your daily life. life. So, so whether you're, you're at the, at the golf, golf course, course, or at the or grocery, grocery store, store, or at the, or at the beauty, beauty parlor, parlor, or at or the at tax, tax office, or wherever, it's an opportunity to share out of your own experience and who you are and what's going on. For example, now, now it's, it's a little easier for me because I'm a pastor, I'm a pastor and if people, people find out what I do, then they, then they expect me to talk, talk about religious kind of, kind of things. things. And if and I, I offer to pray for somebody, they, they almost they always say yes. yes. Uh, they're, uh, they're, they're glad to have that. that. But, but my gosh, gosh, you don't have to be a pastor to do that. When our neighbor, Christian family, believers, but, you know, shared always, our neighbor's in the hospital, he's in the hospital, we go and visit him in the hospital and pray with the family and all, and all of this, this uh, uh, it's just a, a natural, natural kind, kind of a thing, thing you, know? you know? And, and I, you I, don't even you have, have to classify, classify the person, are they a believer or not a believer, believer. Just, just sharing, sharing your and living your faith, your faith like that. that. It, it may be another person. person. And, and what, what you, you do, do, let's say the other person happens to be a, a Christian, then what you do may have been God's presence to them in a special way that they needed. They may have needed that word of encouragement. They may have needed that little financial help. They may have needed the help moving a piece, piece of furniture, furniture in their house. house. I don't know what it would be. So it's so just it's in the event from daily, daily life that happens, happens while you're living, living your faith. faith. 
And then and the second, second thing they, they did, did is they, they talked about, about their faith, faith about, about life, life in relation to their faith. faith. The man the asked them for money. money. They, didn't they didn't have, have any money, money. sort of like, like I go around with almost no cash most of the time. And they didn't have money to give. But then the faith came in. The faith perspective came in. And they prayed for him in the name of Jesus Christ. And later, when they were called before the authorities, they spoke up and gave testimony. But in response to the situation they found themselves in, which they did not go out to provoke. It just happened to them, right? What I'm talking about is you can, as we share our life experiences with one another and we go through life and have conversations with people, we can frame, out of, out of the living faith that we have, we can frame our life experiences from the perspective of our faith. I'm not asking you to be obnoxious about it, or as they say in Spanish, pesado, uh, you know, just really overbearing, but just in a very natural way, like someone said, wow, did you, uh, you, uh, you know, did you see what the one on the news? And you can, you know? God, God really, really helped, helped me through. through. I, had I had a situation, situation happen like that, that and, 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 and the Lord really Lord helped me through. through. Who? Oh, and just, and just talk, talk about it very naturally. naturally. We're not We're talking about, about giving full gospel, gospel presentations, presentations to people. people. Now, now Jesus, Jesus was this, this and, and he did, did that, that, and then and God, God, and if, and if you, you will, will, we're not, we're not talking, talking about that. that. Just in the natural flow of talking about faith and framing it from the perspective of your faith, that may open opportunities further on. To give more detail, they'll talk, talk about, about the full story, story of Jesus Christ, Christ and fill in the picture. And maybe, maybe even invite them to, to, to accept Christ in their life. life. You don't you know, know what the Holy Spirit's going to do with them, them right? right? But, but if we have the idea, idea that we have to have some kind of a program, program some kind of agenda, agenda, we have to have this, have this little three or four step presentation to give, that might be appropriate in a program of some sort, but that's not daily life. What happened, what happened to Peter, Peter and John, John was, was daily, daily life, life daily, daily living. living. And, and the faith, the faith that's in here spilled out. <laughs> and the presence, and the presence of, the of the living Christ, Christ in here spilled out. out. Do you realize that, that Jesus, Jesus was present, present to the to beggar, beggar as Peter, Peter and John? John? Jesus, Jesus was, was present, present to the beggar as Peter and John. John. You, you are, are present, present to the people in your life as you are. And that's, and that's the third, the third, that's the that's third, third part, part of it. Peter and John, Peter and John were not John alone. As they were, they were sharing naturally, naturally out of their faith, faith the, Holy the Holy Spirit was with them. them. And, you, and you never know when the Spirit is going to move in a special way. way. Peter, Peter and John, John probably, probably felt, felt a nudge, nudge but man, but man an elect, a, a nuclear-powered nuclear bolt of energy went through and healed a crippled man in them. You never know. When you're, when you're responding, responding to those gentle, gentle nudges of the Spirit and you are sharing just naturally from your faith with someone, where the Spirit may show up and blow you and the other person off their feet. Jesus may raise this so-called crippled person right up off and they may end up walking and leaping and praising God. You never know. Do you remember when Jesus raised you up? And may, and may you, you walk, walk and leap and, leap and praise, praise God. God. This, this applies to us as a congregation, congregation as well. well. Community United, United Methodist, Methodist Church. Just yesterday, yesterday we, had we had community, community cares. cares. We had about, we had about 20, 20 families we were able to serve. We had to serve breakfast. breakfast. We had almost 15 volunteers, which was amazing and great. And two of them, one of them was a high school freshman from Lake Mary. I'm not sure how she made the connection and showed up. And a neighbor lives in the neighborhood. A young woman came and, and, and served. And it was wonderful uh, getting to do that. But we are, what we want to do is, yes, we want to feed them and we want to help and support them. But we also want them to know that we do this as an expression of the very real love of God in Jesus Christ. We don't, we don't give them give gospel, gospel tracts or Bibles or anything. Or anything. If someone asks for a Bible, we give them one. But we don't do that. But we want them to know that this is in the love of Jesus Christ. Fortunately, um, we had yesterday, we had a blessing station, so I got to pray for everybody. I tried to latch on to them. And, and uh, nobody was... There were mostly regulars yesterday that I've prayed with before and seen before. But uh, it's just sort of a natural thing. But in the things that we do, as we outreach, as we have pumpkin patches or different kinds of things, we want to let people know 
um, that we are demonstrating the love of Jesus with our neighbors and we're striving to be peacemakers in Christ's name. We want to let people know who the who that is behind our why. We want to let people know the who that is behind our why. Sharing faith is a natural part of living faith. Most of us are living our faith, but we're quite reluctant, perhaps, about letting people know that Jesus Christ is connected to who we are and to what we're all about. Now, I'm not talking about using Jesus as a label, like a bumper sticker or something like that. I'm talking about the real living Jesus in you that people can see and that you reach out and share with people. I mean, I mean, sharing, sharing Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ as a living reality is the core of our, of our being. being. When, when Jesus, Jesus is in here, here it shows. When, when Jesus, Jesus is in here, it shows. It shows. So, let's so let's let, let other, other people, people know who it is inside, inside of us. And then, and then we'll, we'll have opportunity, opportunity to invite them, them to know Jesus. Jesus. Let, let us share, share and be and bold. bold in the, in the spirit. spirit. Let us Let pray. pray. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you that you live in us by the spirit. spirit. We want to thank, thank you for the experience of you raising us up from the floor, from, the floor, from being, being crippled, crippled in our in souls, souls, and being, being made whole and new, from being cleansed, cleansed of our sins, sins and given new life. life. We, thank we thank you that you God's, God's vision for us is so much greater and, and more, more beautiful, beautiful than our vision we have for ourselves. Oh God, we, we want, want to walk, walk and, and leap and to praise, and to praise you. you. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would help, help each of us, us as we as live our faith this week. Show, show us the opportunities. Give us those nudges of the Spirit of, the spirit of where, where we, we can, can share, share by word or by deed. deed. And give us boldness, that Holy Ghost boldness, to share naturally, but very genuinely, of the good news of Jesus Christ and of the living, loving God whom we serve. In Christ's name, amen.